Jeff, are you serious, man? L- listen, ugh, guys, backstage, I gave Jeff a pep talk. I told him people are cheering him on. I told him to get out of bed. Stop moping around already. We need. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. What's the point, Joe? What's the point? Listen, I know, man. I'm bummed, too. Chet is no longer with us. It's a sad day in the comic book community, but we have 10 million adoring fans already in this room watching right now. We'll probably have 10 more over the next few minutes, 10 more million, that is. We need to do it for the people. We need to do it for Chet. Get yourself out of bed and let's go. You're right. I know. I'm always right. (laughs) No, you're right. I think I'm going to do it, man. I think I'm I think I'm gonna get out of bed for the show. But I think before I do that, I think we should show people what happened last week, like how we how we found out. Like you know what I mean? Like Yeah, just in case you missed the end credit scene, which comic book canon has end credit scenes now. We do we have one tonight too. I mean, it's probably gonna push the storyline a little further, uh, in case you were wondering what this narrative is. But it's real life. It's real life. But uh <laughs> Yeah, let's just show it, Joe. I'm gonna do. Th- I'm not really ready for the show. I just want to let you know. So it's gonna be a really. It's gonna be a tough one. Um, we'll just show it. Does that sound good, Joe? Roll the tape, man. All right. There's been a disturbance in the force. My spidey sense is tingling. Oh! Jeff and Joe. Chet is dead. That's how it happened, everybody. That's how we all found out. And um, we're still getting over it right now. It's uh, it's going to be one of the toughest show in comic book canon in history, bro. But, I mean, we have things to help us get through, don't we? Uh, what are you doing? Just, I'm hungry, and there's nothing else in my fridge other than some goodness. And Come on, man. It is, Pull it together. It is uh, St. Patrick's Day, too. I think that was Chet's favorite holiday. But we do have something nice from the community, though, right? Like, we do. We have uh, we've gathered some uh, some kind words, some eulogies of a sort, and uh, we've made a little compilation video um, dedicated to our our good friend Chet G Pot. Everybody, please just try and hold. What can I say about Chet G. Pot? I've known him since he was knee high. He, even back then, he had a really buble personality. He was never one to welch on a deal. Chet was fanta... He was fantastic. He was also a well-known grapist. Chet was a man of great honor and intelligence albeit artificial. You all will mourn him as peasants should. I gave Chet my word I would watch over and protect the land of Canon. Now repeat after me. All hail doom. I wanted to send my condolences to the millions and millions of Chet fans uh, across the world, the millions and millions of Chet fans who tuned in to comic book Canon each week. His time on this earth was cut too short. Rest in peace, Chet. Why, Chet? Why? <laughs> My stomach. Oh, good. <laughs> Chet. 
chat. You're a hero, man. Save the cannon. Chet. Chet, man. I'm gonna love you. I'm gonna miss you. You fly high now with the AI. Chet! Don't believe everything you hear online. Comic Heroes, the canon will rise again. Chet. Thank you for everybody who participated in that. <clears throat> I really appreciate the words that were said, and I'm speaking for Joe as well. I don't know how we're going to get through the show tonight, but Chet has passed even though that was really ambiguous, that ending of that video segment right there, Joe. But um, I think we should just get in. I think we should just get into the news. So, Joe, why don't you just start? Yeah, and unfortunately, we do have to kick things off with some rather negative news. In fact, probably the worst news uh, that I've heard in a while, and that is we have to wait an entire extra year for a movie that I'm very much anticipating, and that is Batman number two, the Batman number two, the second Matt Reeves Batman. First one came out probably about two years ago at this point, and I am not kidding you. I watch this movie almost every month. I'll just put it on while I'm bagging and boarding, put it on while I'm pricing, doing some other work, put it on before I fall asleep, whatever it may be. I love this movie. Originally, the second movie, the follow up was slated for. October of this year, which was already quite a bit of a wait. It has been pushed back till October of 20. Sorry, I apologize. I misspoke. It was originally slated for October of 2025, October of next year, and it has been pushed back to October of 2026, meaning we have over two years until this movie comes out. Now, we do have the Penguin television series on the horizon, and that is supposed to be the bridge between those two films. It's going to pick up uh, with Gotham rebuilding after the Riddler's terrorist attacks. And uh, it's going to, you know, kind of key us in to whatever the events are of Batman number two. Uh, but pretty sad news there. Getting delayed an entire year after it was already initially delayed about a year to begin with. Joe, you're a news editor. You're the news editor of the show. You know what's happened previously before, like what's happened before leading up to the news today, right? Not great. Talking about chat, eulogy. Why would you start with this news piece? You're right. I should have brought up something happier. I like, um, but here's the deal. I mean, no surprise with the strikes, uh, with uh, delays in production due to the strike, with uh, DC hopefully getting their ducks in a row. Yes. I don't Listen, like my I don't like my attitude very much, but we're here. We are. So here we are. continue. The first one was great. I'm stoked for the second too. one. I, I hope they uh, they continue with uh, you know how good the first one was. So yeah, that's all for I sure. got to say about that. Uh, we have another piece of news that's seemingly unfortunate. I'm, I'm we really don't have much information on this, um, but and this goes to the Marvel side of things, and that is that uh, Marvel Studios has fired the creator of X Men '97, Bo DeMeo. Um, literally just, oh, what about a week, a little over a week before the, the premiere, which by the way, is this Thursday, March 20th, um, uh, X-Men, the sequel to the X-Men animated series will be premiering. Uh, but yeah, crazy that th this guy was not only the, the, um, the showrunner for the, for the first season, but also was, I believe completed 
or you know, at least far along with working on the second season and already working on a third season. Not only that, but it seems I, I, there has to be some bad blood here. We don't know the reason he was fired yet, but he's been taken off of all like press events for this, um, for the X-Men animated series. So I think there had to be some sort of falling out or something that maybe he did. I, you know, I'm not pointing any fingers or anything here because we don't know, but I, I think there is more to this story than, than, than we know. Um, it, it doesn't seem like just a simple firing. Yet another uh, wonderful news story again from our news editor, Joe. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is very strange to be honest with you, especially so close to the premiere mm. uh, for him to be just let go. No reasons why. Uh, I think another executive producer in another article I read said that it was a, a parting of ways. So that would make it sound like it was mutual, but like, come on, like, seriously, do you think it would be mutual? I, I, I if it was mutual, I would think that they would wait until the, you know, the red carpet premiere and, you know, the end of the season to announce his departure out of respect for everybody going on there. This did not happen. And it was abrupt, which leads me to believe that there's something more to the story. Right, yeah, it's specifically the fact that he's not going to be doing any of the stuff coming up to it. Like, it just did, didn't make no sense. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't make sense the timing of it. Uh, we don't know. We don't know. We'll maybe maybe we'll know. Maybe we'll never know. But uh, stay tuned for more info on that. And also, check out X Men ninety seven. I'm stoked. I've been. I can't crazy. wait. I'll be honest. If there's yeah. anything you know to look forward to this week, other than uh maybe being able to clean up my room from all the tissues is x-men 97 i cannot wait it looks great uh there was a clip that was released we probably should have ran that uh but it looks it really looks good like the animation is similar to what it was back then but better. Oh, yeah. does that make sense like yeah yeah i don't think anybody would oh. choose that style these days no. uh but i do think that um they were obviously calling back to those days so anyway right Moving on, Joseph. What do we got? Yeah. Uh, last piece of news. Sorry, not the last piece of news. We have two more pieces of news. But uh, last piece of Marvel news, that is, uh, that Venom 3 has a release date. Uh, it originally was going to be a little bit later in November, but now has been moved to October 25th. Um, and it has been given a title, Venom The Last Dance. Uh, kind of inferring that... This is going to cap off the trilogy here. You know, we got Venom. We got Venom. Uh, Let There Be Carnage. And now we're getting Venom, The Last Dance. It makes me think that they are going to probably pull the plug on the Venom solo movies after this one. Th that's just my thought, you know, with given the title uh, and the fact that Sony has not been putting out very good content. Uh, Look, we're not ones to pull the plug. You know, no. we're ones to see things grow. It's like, you know, you draft that quarterback. You want to see that quarterback grow and and, and grow into that starting starting uh, role and leader of the team. But, like, my God, it went from mediocre from Ven the first Venom film to atrocious. It was so bad, that movie. So bad, this, the, the sequel. Yeah. And now The Last Dance. And actually, I, I'm, I'm excited because Sony's going to hopefully wrap this up and hopefully get some sort of relationship with Marvel where they is reboot the right word. What do you, what, what are you, what are we talking about here? I, I, don't, I don't know. know. It, it's tough. I mean, they, they could, they could possibly work it in to the best possible situation that I can see is Sony just selling it to Marvel. Uh, if they do want to do that's going to be, a, that's going to be like what it's going to be, what Marvel paid for, for Disney. It's going to be at least $4 billion oh, for, for the Spider-Man properties. Yeah. Billions for sure. Uh, but at the same time, I, as much as I want that to happen, I don't think it will. Um, if there's a collaborative effort, like there was on the three Spider-Man movies, which were all at least good. Um, yeah. and sp the, the use of Spider-Man in, in, you know, civil war and, and, uh, the, the Avengers movies, if we get that, I'll be happy with that. I don't necessarily need, you know, a full takeover, but. Well, he yeah, exactly. I, I completely agree. A kind of partnership where that's where they do their best work. But here's the deal, man. Sony is going to be releasing Craven the Hunter later this year. Yeah. That's 
the last movie on their slate, I think, because remember, there was going to be a jackpot movie. There was going to be El Muerto. There was going to be all of this garbage that nobody asked for on top of Morbius, on top of Venom, Venom 2, like Madam Web. Uh, Hypno Hustler, yeah. It's just, mm-hmm. God, just, just come on. Just move on, people. Realize yeah. that the best partnership and the most money you do make is partnering up with Marvel Studios. Moving on, Joseph. Moving on uh, to the, the the best piece of news, in my opinion, has to do with uh, The Crow. We got a trailer. We had that first look image that we spoke on, I believe, last week or maybe the week before. Uh, but we got a full three-minute long trailer. Three minutes and 17 seconds, if I remember correctly. I've watched it many times. Uh, I'm stoked. It it I'll tell you this. It does not seem quite as dark and gritty as the initial as as the sorry i shouldn't say the initial the 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 brandon lee movie there have been lots of crow movies and but that's the one people mainly talk about it was the first one um it it doesn't seem as dark or gritty but it does seem violent it does seem uh emotional and it does seem at least for me it really really caught my attention and got me thinking about the comic stories in fact I-, I would say that there's a potential for this movie to be more si- more of a similar feel to the comic books than the first movie which was great i love that movie but it did stray away from the comic books in a lot of ways um so yeah i'm stoked uh i'm gonna go see that movie opening night you know i am you know i'm probably gonna see it multiple times can't wait for it uh, that trail, by the way, yeah, I'm, I'm back. I, I'm off the bed. You know, I moved from the bed down to the, you know, my first floor to get a few beers in honor of Chet and St. Patrick's Day. Now I'm here. I'm going to open up my, open up the comic, comic book cannon cave, cannon cave. You know, let's get these lights on here. Uh, but yo, that trailer, Joe, whoo, I loved it. And for you to say it's not, I, I gotta, I gotta refresh, right? I gotta Get a refresher in from the the '90s Crow movie. I gotta watch yeah. it again because I don't remember it being that gritty, dude. Somebody got shot in the head, and you oh, yeah. in the trailer. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I, I was saying it was the violence level was awesome. It, it, you know, I I love that. <laughs> you know, that I want that to be you know super R rated adult violence in that movie. I didn't think it was as as dark or gritty. Like just the the whole. The, the first movie is very, like, dystopian. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, it's got that, you know... Uh, thanks, Josh. By the way, thanks, Josh. Like, I, I, I don't have my makeup artist here. I, I turned everybody away at the door. And I just can't. I can't take this criticism. For Jeff, I have some good news for you. What? Saquon Barkley is an eagle. Yeah. <sighs> We should have added that to the news, honestly. That <laughs> might be Giants the best. Fans, that's yeah. silly. You silly Giants fans. All right, I'm back, guys. I'm back. You know, it's a big loss to the community with Chet gone. Uh, talking about the Crow, though, I'm excited to see it. My God, man. The, the, just the cinematics, the, 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 the way that trailer was cut. And we've been, we, we've been fooled before, Joe, with trailers. We have. More but videos. I have high hopes for this. By the way, I had a flood in my basement as well. So I have a, uh, you know, kind of an industrial fan. If it, if it sounds awful, I'll move. But no, I, to... you sound great, man. Thanks, man. I really appreciate that. Um, Alexa, turn on basement lights. Okay. Thanks, bro. As you can see, uh, I got some long boxes down here to try and save the, uh, the... Anyways, let us know what you think. It's a very kind of ragtag kind of show again. Joe and I are getting over the loss of Chet, uh, as I know the community is too. Um, but um, yeah, let us know uh, what you think of the in the chat about Venom Three, about the Crow, about uh, the Batman delay, and the, the firing of the showrunner of X Men ninety seven. Joe, these are some great news stories you picked as the the news editor of Comic Book Canon. I applaud you. Okay, that's me. That's what I do. I edit the news. I think we're going to close up the, uh, again, very kind of loosey-goosey show. Joe and I were really getting, I mean, Joe, you were pretty emotional. Um, 
earlier in the week, you know? So there you go. I just set up my, my thing here. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, you're pretty emotional as well. You, you just handled things a little bit better than I have. Yeah, it's rough. I mean, Chet has been, uh, our co-host for the better part of a year now. I mean, um, yeah, it's been, been a while and yeah. you know, he's, he's, he's grown to be a friend. Initially we were contractually obligated and, uh, you know, he saved uh, he saved our asses a couple times. So. He literally just saved us. He, he put his life on the line to save us and Dan De La Torre. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Dan, how do you feel about that? Oh, that's a surprise. You didn't even give him a heads up. <laughs> Sorry, I was. We'll talk backstage. I found something absolutely hilarious from the Golden Age. Anyway, <laughs> um, Chester Hero, man, come on. We we uh, look. I get it. I, I I'm ready to get a couple beers myself downstairs. And don't tempt me. I will. By the way. Hey, uh, you, you need to. By the way, good work. I'm wearing the green. Thank you. Thank. You. Hey, somebody's got to celebrate. Somebody's got to celebrate. I didn't know it was St. Patrick's Day until you said it. This is an actual Guinness pint glass with Guinness in it. Don't you keep? I can't stand what people. Put. Bless you. Thank you. He's he's crying. Um, anyways, um, I think we're gonna move on to the next story. We'll see you later, Judge. Okay. I'll be ready. All right. Um, so. I think we're going to move on to the next thing here. Uh, we didn't put much work into the show at all because, again, just getting over the events. Uh, but, you know, we have a great segment called Ask Joe. And we would like to hear from you all questions for Ask Joe. It's as easy as asking Joe in the chat. Please ask Joe and Jeff some questions. Uh, it really, we enjoy that. We enjoy talking about it. But there's one more piece of news before we wrap up. What's that? This, this is going to be our first guest of the year. It's only the end of March, and we are going to have, get ready for this. This is a big one. Next week. Swaggle House! Love you. Love you, Mickey. Mickey, uh, a.k.a. Swaggle House Comics, will be uh, in the house next Sunday night talking about Sanity. It's not volume two. I think it's issue two. Is that correct, Joe? Yeah, issue two. Mm. So looking forward to that, everybody. Please put that on your calendar. Most of you guys are here every week anyways, and we appreciate you. Uh, truly appreciate you. So get those questions in the chat, ask Joe. But before we get to those questions, I mean, oh, it's two and three. Thank you, Dr. Plagueis, for that. <laughs> um, and thank. Uh, actually, that was Dr. Doom. It wasn't Dr. Plagueis. Uh Anyways, uh, Dr. Plagueis is in the house, and Dr. Plagueis is absolutely excited for uh, Sanity, issue two and three. Uh, yep, Comic Toby in the house, who is excited about Swaggle House next week. We got, of course, Josh's Comics, who really is critical of me, and it, it's kind of unfair uh, about the shine on my head. I mean, I did what I I did what I did could without my makeup artist before the show, the can. I turned everybody away. Joe tried to send me food. And I, I yelled that Uber driver off of my property. I said, get out, get off my lawn. I heard you threw batteries at him. Oh, yeah, because I had extra batteries, too. Um, yeah. yeah, but Goonish Lurker's here as well. That was a great, uh, we loved seeing your face in that uh, eulogy as well. I'd really like to know what happened with the director of the X-Men 97 show. My partner and I have been watching the OG show leading up to this week's premiere. It was the showrunner, not the director. Uh, but maybe there's some info on the director. I, I don't. I don't know. Um, uh, we got Paul, ba we got, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Joe. I'm sorry. It's okay. We're going through a lot right now. We got bond. Paul, Paul bond. Bond. in the house. Uh, is it legal to have two bald hosts? I mean, am I not bald if I wear a hat, Joe? What? That's actually, okay. we, actually, we'll save that for Ask Joe. By the way, get the <laughs> question and save for Ask Joe. Uh, we got, who else do we have? We have Spider Dude in the house. By the way, if you're not following EGS or Spider Dude on the Instagrams or their websites or what have you, please click the links down below. We got Immortal Scruffy, one of the best Batman movies, agrees with you, by the way, Joe. Joe says that is the best Batman movie of all time, ever, 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 ever. I don't agree with Joe. I think The Dark Knight is the best Batman film of all time. You just saw this handsome man's face, Dan De La Torre. Don't drown your sorrows. 
too late. <laughs> uh, we got Frost Behemoth in the house. Rip to chat. All right. All right, be chat. Mike Hags as well. Uh, again, this is very loosey goosey. This this uh, what we have going on today. Uh, who else? Who else? Who else? We got Jordan Nori in the house. We got a good bunch of uh, good good crew. Good crew. Good crew. So why don't we just start off with um, uh, with one thing that you know uh, the thing that we do. It's you know it's. Um, That's Jeff. And right. Jeff. So we're going to start off with Mark Lenniker's great question. It's a really good question. We love for your comments as well on this. Uh, is it legal to have Duval host? Now let's break this question down in terms of legality, Joe. I mean, I don't think there's anything like the Constitution that says, hey, you can't have two hosts that are live streaming the most popular show on YouTube and they can't be bald. Is, is there anything in the Constitution that says that? Well, you see, one bald host. Now, that creates a little bit of diversity. You know, me and Jeff, um, as as white men, we need to cling on to something, some, some identity, because let's be real, white men are generally boring. So we cling on to the, the baldness here. That's what we, we've, we've done. We, 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 it is, it's true. Not only does it stop with the baldness. Check this out, guys. Joe and I both right yep I'll tell you it's what. actually a phenomenon called uh follicle migration where your hair from your head transports to the bottom half of your head follicle migration uh so jeff and i have have decided to to do this together in together. solidarity uh one bald host gives us diversity. And now, what we do, bald, you know, Joe, I, I live in this near New York City. Joe lives near Philadelphia or outside of yeah. Philadelphia. And what we do is we uh, live or FaceTime each other as we are shaving our heads. We do. And just kind of trimming this up. So uh, I, I don't know what Shelby thinks about the style. Alicia loves it. She loves it. You're a handsome man, Jeff. No, you're a handsomer man. Anyways, oh, I, I know that, but you're also okay looking. You're, but you're more okay looking. Oh, okay, cool. Thank you. We're full of compliments tonight. Why not? <laughs> All right, we do have some questions here. Ask Joe or Jeff. Would you rather have the Eagles win? <laughs> you should, wh why am I not asking this question, by the way? Like, what the hell? You are. You're included. <sighs> Would you rather have the Eagles win the Super Bowl every year, but you can't have any comics ever, or you can have all the comics ever but never watch football again i know my oh shit never watch football again that's a tough one never watch football well, again isn't the same well, as the, no. the, the eagles not winning the super bowl ever again like this is no this is yeah like the super bowl thing because joe and i are used to the eagles never like i in my lifetime well joe i'll let you answer this first yeah I, what i was gonna say is uh this, this is a tough one i do very much enjoy football but i would i would give up football if it's a matter of never, you can't have any comics ever. So that is, I assume that would mean everything that I own, all the comics that I own would disappear. That would be a massive financial loss. Also, look, I look, sell comics. By the <laughs> like, way, he's being very strict with this. He's like, no, yeah. no football. No foot. I, I would, I would have to pick the no football over the no comics. Yeah. Sure. Here's the deal. That's, this is such an unfair question because Joe and I are more than just comics, right? Yeah. So, um, but you can't have any comics ever. It's either you, it's either comics or no football. And like, we've enjoyed both of those things. Yeah. I'll tell you what, if it was like, if it was the Eagles never winning a Super Bowl again, here's the deal. Cause I'm going to put this in perspective for everybody before 2018. I honestly thought I would never see the Eagles <laughs> win a Super Bowl in my lifetime. So I will say, uh, I will say I'll continue to collect comics and the Eagles don't need to ever win a Super Bowl again because I, I'm like falling back. I still smile, Joe, about that Super Bowl, right? That oh, yeah. whole year is so special. Yeah, um, a backup quarterback beat Tom Brady. It was amazing. And he's got a statue outside of the freaking <laughs> our stadium. Um, but if it's no football, I, I can't answer that, Joe. I can't. Moving on. Sorry, Mike. I'm sorry. Uh, who do we have next? We have 
Ask Joe, CBC, can I pretty please have your SpongeBob comics? I don't, I don't have any, so I can't answer this. Listen, Danny, you can. You just have to pay me $200 for it. It's that simple. <laughs> well said. Uh, we're going to move on to the next question. Goonish Lurker, with as many collections you have been obtaining, uh, ask Joe, by the way, when will we see a 360 Comics physical store? I, I Listen, I've been toying with a lot of things recently one of them being doing comics full-time quitting quitting my job and, and taking the plunge toying with it i have not made any sort of a decision yet another thing would be you know is having a physical location which that would only happen if i was doing comics full-time and it, it wouldn't even be a definite if i was doing comics full-time because brick and mortar locations have their own headaches of such um so yeah uh i don't know i don't i don't know if that's ever something you're gonna see there certainly is a non-zero chance but it is i, I would say it is definitely less than a 50 percent chance that that will ever happen it the way okay i'm gonna just give my input here the way you handle yourself in your business by the way joe is phenomenal if you don't know him outside of comic book canon he is a phenomenal uh, dealer of books. Uh, he will get you great deals, get great prices. Uh, that being said, the way he runs his, I mean, this is, a, it's its a side hustle that's become more than a side hustle. Fair to say? Sure. Absolutely. Okay. So the way he runs this, I'm going to say business, there's no need for a brick and mortar. As much as I would love to see a brick and mortar, there's the overhead on the rent, probably more employees, right? And one, yeah, and the t extra time for you, the extra time away from, because you do this at home, you get to hang out with Shelby, your wife, you get to be there, and you know what I mean. So, I, I I'll be honest, I couldn't see it, but it would be very cool if there was a three sixty brick and mortar. Yeah, yeah, and it, listen, it it would definitely, definitely take me doing comics full time. You can't really have a brick and mortar location if it's not your full time job, unless you're doing it as a hobby you know if, unless you're doing it to like there there are play, people that run like hobby stores comic stores that they're losing money doing so but they want to do it uh, i wouldn't want to be losing money doing it i have a, a good thing going here on instagram or, or over there on instagram and there's you know so it, yeah that's just, it's that's fair my to say points. there's no incentive for you to do this you know what i mean like there's no yeah there's 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 certainly incentive like the amount of times that I've been sitting at my LCS playing magic or just hanging out there and a sicko multi-thousand dollar collection just walks in the door is it's, it's shocking how often that happens. What I'm, but what, okay, go ahead. Sorry. What I was going to say is that, that the, the benefits do not outweigh the, the headache that a brick and mortar location will cause. Yeah, for sure. Like exactly. And again, it's a lot more responsibility. I mean, like things like insurance, starting an LLC, which yep. anyway. So uh, great question, but uh, no, uh, we're going to go actually to a live question. But before we do, to chat, to live chat. question, live question. Dan De La Torre, I do believe you have a live question. Uh, judge, actually, that's, you're not the judge right now. You're just Dan. Not in my legal robes right now. I'm just citizen Dan De La Torre. With a question for a prof um, semi-professional, I, I don't want to push you into a brick and mortar. That's a huge responsibility, a huge legal and, and financial liability. So if you do pr proceed with caution, I, I, I have a tough time running my little operation. Now, I, as you know, I'm a very old collector, a very old collector. I'm pushing 50 years of collecting comics. Dan, um, yes. you're young at heart. And you look, I am young. You look no, no older than... 90-something? Okay. Okay, thank you. Hey, well, speaking of this, this is the 25th anniversary comic book price guide here. I still have all my old price oh, guides. Jesus Christ. Look and this is from 1986. And I was thumbing through this. And it's back in those days, um, we started to realize in the late 70s and 80s that, you know, comics are just, they won't last forever. And they were starting to disintegrate because the, the storage wasn't all that great. Mylar was just kind of a new thing that was coming on board at the time. And I was stumbling across these um, articles here. About rest here it is right here. Restorations. And yep. what was going on was back in those days, people who were very, very talented and, and people people who were 
uh, familiar with how to restore paper documents, that sort of thing. We kind of talked about this last week, Joe, with water restoration. It became very popular and accepted that if you send an old comic in, we could restore it. It looks gorgeous. And they did a before and after. And these people, I don't know how they did what they did, but they were very, very damn talented. Today, over the last number of years, especially with CGC, if you get this, the dreaded purple label. Oh, it's awful. No one wants this. And the thing is that they they drop in value. I got this for about a third of the price of what a non-purple label would have. And I got just a couple of examples here. I mean, these are just really, really expensive books for next to nothing. I only paid 300 bucks for this one, an FF12. You know, come on, because again, the purple yeah. label, they were just giving these things away. And probably the last one I got here is a golden age. I love this comic. It's uh, Captain Marvel Adventures number 68. But mm-hmm. look how pretty that is. No, uh, but fantastic. again, I, I paid maybe 135 bucks for it. I think it was an absolute steal. So, Mr. Joseph. Yes. You sit, when you, as you buy and sell these comics here, in fact, let me give probably the best example of a restored book or something that should be restored. I have this here, and I'm going to be very careful with it. This is All Wonders number 21. There's about 100 of these known to exist. It's the second and last appearance of the All Winners squad from the Golden Age. This was a Heritage Auction book, which I almost dropped. Uh, the reason why, it's it's coverless. And you can look, look it up on Heritage. This is, this is the one and only one that they had here. Um, it's missing the center page. Now, this particular one was never reprinted in comic book form. Someone did go to the trouble of making a very nice facsimile cover this is a really pretty cover front and back but i've seen ones that are front and back but are blank on the inside they went to the trouble of coming up with the actual uh um advertisements of the day and the legal banner if i can get my hand out of the way that one right there how they got their hands on this one i don't know but they did and so this was beautifully restored but what's your take on i mean this clearly since it's a rare book what if i got this restored what would you and what what would this do to the market and what what's your thoughts overall about restored books that are that are worthwhile to you know invest some money in so it's actually interesting specifically the book that you're talking about is missing something yes uh and therefore would it would get a green label if you sent it in you know missing the cover right the the interesting thing about it is if you were to find let's just say you, you got lucky enough to find an all winners 21 cover, just the cover of a book, um, you know, detached somewhere in the wild. And you take that cover and you marry that cover onto the book. That would not be considered restoration per se. It would still get a green label married comics, comics that have pieces from two or more comics put together to make a complete comic those get a green label. It's not considered restoration. It's considered qualified. That's just the way it is. Um, As far as restoration, or even talking about married comics, you are totally right in what you have said, is that back, you know, 40 years ago, back in in the 1980s, when comic book collecting was really, really growing for the first time, uh, a lot of that had to do with with Overstreet. A lot of that had to do with with conventions popping up more often, and specifically comic stores popping up everywhere. Um, restoration and marrying comics mm. was a lot more common and a lot more accepted in the community. That has just changed. That it's simply enough that has changed, and I, I do think that grading, you know, CGC, the emergence of CGC you know, almost what, 20, 20 some years ago at this point. Um, and, uh, you know, just a, a shift in the, in the community um, has, has really brought down the price of those, those books that have been restored. I, for one, and this is just personally my opinion, I want the original comic. I don't want something added to the comic, like color touch. I don't like, you know, when things are, are reattached, unless it's just reattached by tape, you know, that that's fine. If some kid put a piece of tape on their cover, I don't mind that as much as, you know, professional restoration, professional reinforcement. Um, there are people that love those kind of books and will grab those books at any chance possible because you can get them for, like you said, a fraction of the price. You said a, a third. 
Um, the kind of the rule of thumb is, you know, you often hear people say half of the value, but it can definitely go as low as, as a third. Um, some books specifically like AF 15, fantastic Four one and a lot of golden age books. It's usually 50 to 60% of the value. Sometimes even more than that, just because they're more highly sought after books. Um, will there ever be a shift again? As a, as to people not caring if a book is restored, I don't know. We don't know what's gonna, the, the future is going to hold behind that. I could see it happening, but I could also see, um, you know, it continue to go the way it is. Uh, a lot of it just has to do with personal preference of the collector. And you know, I just shared my personal preference. You clearly don't mind. You're gr- you're you're fine with having a great deal on a book. And realistically, if you think about it, you know, especially color touch per se what's the difference between color touch being on a book and like a stain or dirt or something like that that is on the book not much other than it's paint instead of whatever other you know substances on the book or even like you know someone writing on a book with pen or marker it's a very similar thing so that being said um there definitely has been a shift like you mentioned will that shift ever shift back I don't know, um, but a good rule of thumb as always is collect what you like. I think it should, and I think it will. Maybe maybe after our lifetime, as these comics literally disintegrate because they won't sure. last forever. We all know that. Sure. Then people will say, out of desperation, we need to start preserving. You know, because again, they either preserve them or they let them wither into dust. Yeah, yeah, and you know that's a lot of the reason that a lot of people get books graded. Um, personally, why I get some of my really, really low grade golden age books graded. Um, I have a couple that I'm, I'm going to be sending off soon um, just to get them encapsulated as a form of preservation. Uh, because like you said, yeah. it, paper does not last forever and we definitely do need to do things to, to increase the longevity of these. And if that becomes restoration eventually, then so be it. You, you make a really good point is that, you know, these we might have a book that's mid grade now, but that paper will deteriorate at some point. It's not even a matter of being handled improperly. It just will simply deteriorate. Um, I should throw this out there. If you don't know what it is, look up what chamber paper is. Uh, anyone who collects older books, chamber paper, you can uh, put in, uh, in usually in the centerfold or in interior cover of a comic and it actually absorbs the gases that comics um, uh, exude, and they uh, basically preserve the comic a, a little bit better um, by sucking up all those gases in there instead of having your your comic kind of. That's interesting. Yeah, Chamber I do people. like this piece of advice that Bond, Paul Bond. Paul Bond. Uh, I think you should throw it out. What day does your trash get picked up? <laughs> yeah good point that's that's good advice right there very good advice. picked up on uh on thursdays so if anyone ever needs used bags and boards you can usually find several hundred in the trash can outside my house uh, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes they are very used bags and boards depending on how old the collection is that i bought right uh all right dan thank you for that uh we'll see you a little bit later as the judge okay thanks judge uh, we do have another question here. Uh, please put your questions down below, by the way, uh, in the comments. Ask Joe, Jeff as well, would you do it? What would any of you be willing to do? Would you sail to the end of the earth and beyond to fetch back Witty Chet and his precious AI intelligence? There's nothing we wouldn't do, Joe. Is this lyrics to a song that I'm not getting? There's nothing we would not do. I agree, but is is this a reference to something? I doubt it. Uh, I think I think Josh is like seriously interested uh, in this. So there's nothing yeah. we wouldn't do. Like honestly, um, I mean, I'm not going to you know sell my child. I'm not going to trade my child for Chet. Uh, nor would I trade my girlfriend or you know my parents. By the way, my parents were watching tonight. They're worried about me. Um, I don't know, Joe. What, what wouldn't you do? To save chat. Uh, I wouldn't stop watching football forever. 
Facts. Okay. 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 Uh, well, here's the deal, uh, Josh. As you all know, we do have we do have end credit scenes at the end of the show. Mm-hmm. They have something um something on that topic. Yeah. By the way, I, I should note this because I, I I don't know how many of you have stuck around, but we have actually had end credit scenes on multiple of our last five or show so shows. And if you didn't stick around, go back and watch those at some point because they're they're pretty funny. They're I mean they're not meant to be funny. It's like legit. well sometimes they're funny. I mean, sometimes I'm they're not. serious business here, people. Twenty three million people watching understand that. Uh, anyways, Josh, what would you do? How far would you go with your pirates to um, <laughs> phrasing? Anyways, uh, Mark Lenniker, going back to what uh, Mister our judge was saying. Um, yeah. What does a coverless get? Uh, so oh, from yeah. CGC, uh, 0.5. Uh, sorry, not, sorry, excuse me. From CGC NG, you are correct. From CBCS, they actually have a, their own grade for a coverless book. It is 0.3. That is what they uh, will grade a coverless book at. So if you see a 0.3, that just means coverless. NG, okay. not graded, is a uh, is the grade for from uh, CGC. I don't know about PGX, and I don't know about... Um, uh, EGS, how they handle that. But if Tony hops in, we can always ask him. Yes. Uh, happy to have Tony anytime. Um, by the way, Bronzeville would rather have a clonic bar than do anything to save Chet. <laughs> Jim has always been like anti Chet. And Jim, if you could let us know in the uh, in the chat here why, because he's really he saved the cannon. Like, let's be honest, right, Joe? Yeah, yeah. He saved the cannon. Joe and I were trapped in the Matrix for a week. Shelby's like, where is my husband? Alicia's like, where is my boyfriend? Like, it was, it was, it was a tough time for us. Anyways, pretty crazy. Uh, I think Joe, we may have, we may have one more question. I think. Well, we. Ha- I just want to address something. Comic Toby, Alex, aka Screech, has been on Comic Book Canon before. He was on a special Star Wars episode that he we was. did. When they, I think it was when they announced Ahsoka, or when we got the yeah, Ahsoka yeah, yeah. trailer. It was, it was at some point. He's also been in a couple of clips with me. I, uh, me and Alex, we go way back. I've known Alex since I was like twelve years old. And you so, guys were enemies in this one clip too, like dueling we, lightsabers. We we were something. Dun, 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 that whole thing was happening, right? Yeah, yeah. You, that that flip you did, I didn't know you had an it. Right, yeah, and then I got Darth mauled. Uh, you absolutely did. By the way, PGX does great coverless, usually at NATO. <laughs> <or eight by. laughs> oh, PGX. Yeah. Uh, it's looking like guys, this could be the end of the segment, which we don't like doing. Do we Joe? This is the meat of the cannon, right? The heart of the cannon is fresh from the comic shop, but the meat. I, I kind of like it because we get to listen to the theme song again. We do. Uh, so if anybody doesn't have any more questions, by the way, I'm definitely feeling St. Patrick's Day right now. Um, no, I did not forget about him in college. Alex forgot that we went to college together, too. Shut up, Joe. Who, shut up. No, tell me the story. We went to l- listen. We were talking about it the other day uh, or months ago, and I was like, I said something about like Temple. And he was like, you went to Temple? And I was like, Alex, Dude. yes. I didn't I did not spend much time on campus when I was in college. I commuted because it was right in the city of Philadelphia and I was in touring bands all through college. So that's, that's what I did. I wasn't involved with school stuff. I didn't go to sporting events. I went home. I I did my homework. I had a job and I had bands that I played with and on all our breaks, I went and played with bands. So Alex forgot I existed during college. That, That makes no sense though. I mean, there's still times you guys hung out in college, right? I mean, we didn't, we went to a school that had tens of thousands of people. I mean, yes, there, there were definitely times we, we played like poker games together and stuff like that, but no, no excuse. I'm sorry. Yeah. You guys are like, literally have known each other since the third grade, sixth grade. That's what I said. Uh, moving on. I think this is the end of the segment because Ask John. Jeff. Yeah. Jeff. Time, guys. 
Uh, again, we appreciate you all being here for this comic book canon, the hardest comic book canon we've ever had, uh, coming off the death of Chet. But as Joe is kind of teasing, we do have end credit scenes here at comic book canon. The only, I mean, we're the most popular YouTube show, 22 million people watching right now, um, watching right now. And again, uh, we'll see how this goes, but, uh, yeah, we've been doing end credit scenes, so. Spread the word. We're the best channel, on, you know, best channel on YouTube. Um, so Joe, we do this segment every week. It's, you know, it's usually after a little bit after S. Joe and Jeff, but again, it's a kind of a shorter show. Not much going on because we are grieving. Uh, what's what's the segment called? From the depths of my broken heart, <laughs> I bring bring to you the viewers a special memorial segment here on comic book canon we will share our comic book and we will do so in memory of our great friend our heroic savior chet g pot this segment is called fresh from the comic we ask you each and every week to send us in your friends gets and you never disappoint they're wonderful just send them to ig hashtag fftcs and we'll have them on the show it's that it's that simple right now it's that simple man it's that simple pull it pull it together man pull it together. um yeah, you, you send in your fresh gets. They could be two days old. They could be 30 years old. As long as they're fresh in your collection, we want to see them. Uh, hashtag FFTCS. And on top of that, if you send them in, you're already like submitting uh, for our monthly contest, which is with, uh, in partnership with Spider Dude Comics and EGS. You can see down below the link. Spider Dude Comics, great deals on comics, by the way. Fantastic deals on comics and EGS. I mean, come on. What more do we want to say about them? Because y'all know about them. Save 5% off your EGS order using the code Canon5. Optional custom labels. Free graders notes. Fast turnaround times. EGScomicsgrading.com. The link is down below. Uh, yeah, right there. Um, uh, And by the way... <laughs> Book of the month. Shall we show them? Shall we show them? Oh, it's a Scotty Young beauty. It's it's gorgeous. I mean, the colors, the the ensemble right there. Uh, love it, love it, love it. Uh, Spider Man twenty five. The Scotty Young variants. This, I love Scotty Young, but this one, just something I I love about this Spider Man cover. Uh, absolutely. So. Good job right there. Really appreciate uh, these partners. Honestly, they they make it happen. They are the reason why this segment is so good, so much fun. I mean, actually the audience, but uh, they, they put a little competition into that. So not only is there a monthly book, but throughout the year, we tally up all the votes you get. And that'll have the seating for the, the winners of each month to be in the yearly, the yearly tournament. So we have the 2023 tournament in honor of March Madness. Uh, Joe, I have some updates. Joseph, I Let's mean, come him. on. We have a final, Joe. We have a final. What? Nukes Comics versus Super Crispy Comics for this gorgeous Hulk number one. It is the uh, the first appearance, show of the Red Hulk. Uh, it is Hulk number one. The one in ten variant. Daniel Acuna. Gorgeous cover. Uh, what a book right there. And it's going to be an epic battle right here. Nukes Comics versus T Super Crispy Comics. Uh, and we will, um, yeah, we will have that tonight. It's going to go off tonight after the show, Joe. Ooh, so we're going to have, we're going to have the winner tomorrow. We are going to have a winner uh, 24 hours later once it goes off. Ooh. So but check you're out not going to know next week. Huh? But we're not going to tell everyone until next week. Yeah, we won't tell anybody till next week. It's a big deal. It's gonna be a big deal. Now that March Madness is like really starting, it's super exciting. You know what I mean? Like we can use the hashtag March Madness. We're gonna get 20 million more followers on oh, Instagram. God. Like they're gonna hate us because we have so many, so many followers. Uh, but anyways, I have some more stuff to say too. But Joe, I, I'm gonna would need your help with Fresh from the Comic Shop because I did not take down the uh I, I rushed back here from Queens, New York. 
Oh, I got to pop open all of them and read the thing? Okay. Yeah, you hate me. But before you do that, we'll start with – um. How about, how about this? I'll give you a heads up. We will start with Nori Jordan. Cool. Uh, but we have our um, – so, yeah, uh, again, it was uh, – Wow. Nukes Comics. By the way, we had a ton of – you guys are crushing it with the votes here. You guys are getting a ton, a ton of people to vote. We really appreciate it. It helps the algorithms. It helps us with the channel. Uh, so, again, we really appreciate it in all seriousness. We have, um, uh, who do we have? Nukes Comics over Dr. Plagueis, 52% to 48%. By the way, I have my notes here, 52% to 47%. Joe, that does not equal 100%. You being in the numbers game, right? Uh, it uh, confirmed. Thank you. Uh, and then we also have, who, who's this? Who is this? Super Crispy over Goonish Lurker. This time it's 52% over 48% as well. Actually, wow. Uh, anyways, moving on. Uh, we had a lot. Again, votes count, people. Votes count. We are also going to have the semifinals for March uh, as well. We should have had it this week. We didn't want to distract from the yearly uh, tournament. So, um Wait, we have a wait timeout. You can look, but you can't touch my Transformer Six. We we're gonna get to that, Toby. We are gonna get to that, Doctor Plagueis. Thank you, really appreciate that. And yeah, Tishu, hell yeah, yes. Glad to have you on the background. Dress in black for both Chet's memorial and for doing taxes. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was very good, Tishu. Um, all right, moving on. Uh, so Joseph, what did I say we we're going to start with? Nori Jordan. Nori Jordan, indeed. What do we have, Joe? We have an awesome Punisher Max book. Uh, Jordan said, I figured I would continue showing some great covers from the Punisher Max series featuring a great bullseye story. This series is clearly for adults and bullseye does some crazy stuff even for him. The series really digs deep into the crazy mind of Marvel's great assassin. There are big things coming in the next couple of weeks. There will be a huge return of the Thunderbolts. And yes, dot, 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 more bullseye. Here's the deal, Joseph. Yeah. Nori Jordan has stepped up his game. He's not posting books up against the wall on the floor. He's actually yeah. thinking this through. And I, I love this submission right here. Yeah, sweet book, awesome one. You know, Punisher Max. You know, I think because you know, a lot of the, a lot of the, like the, the the Max runs and stuff like that, they don't get enough love. Just they're they're just less popular. Not a lot of keys in them. They're not really in continuity, so on and so forth. But uh, very good stuff. Like great runs, great reading material. Check them out whenever you have time, especially there if you're a, a fan yeah. of the grittier stuff. There was a lot of comments uh, for that post saying great run right here. So yeah. great submission as well. We messed up, though. Uh, let's. By the way, let's bring Dan De La Torre. I didn't get a chance to go out to the comic book shop this week, so Dan De La Torre will be filling in. Oh, yeah, up. bring him in here. The judge will be filling in for showing off some new gets as well but joe yeah uh we messed up by the way my computer uh whoa where did, i can't see you i can't run the show what uh -oh. the hell? can oh. you hear me i can hear you are you getting something right. in the matrix again there we go we're good okay good Whew. Whew, that was weird um anyways uh we messed up we did not give our three criterias by the way if you want to submit so let's get into this real quick uh we look for three uh, criteria to move you on to the semifinals, which, again, our audience decides who moves on to the finals. Uh, first off is presentation. Take a well-composed shot of your book. Uh, good lighting. Uh, have it relate to the book. Uh, uh, Racing on the Comics does a great job with that. Um, don't take a picture of it in a dirty bathtub like Joe sometimes did when he first started out. Uh <laughs> So presentation counts. God, this is getting to me. And I, wow. Uh, Joe, Joe, next up, what do you got? What do, what do you mean? What do I, oh, you're asking for my first fresh get of the week? No, uh, criteria. Oh, criteria. Oh, 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 oh. You want me to tell them that we want to see some unique books and unique. It certainly does not mean $30,000. It could be 30 cents for all we care, but we want to see something. Maybe we haven't seen before something about this book, whether it's just, Something forgotten by the time, you know, from the golden age, from pre 
you know, before our, our, our births from long ago, something we haven't heard of before. It could just be an indie book, you know, something more recent that just isn't very uh, publicly well known. It could be something uh, that has something unique about it, like a piece of original art on it or a signature or a misprinting or um, I don't know, Tony Danza's booger stuck to the cover, whatever it may be to make unique. this book unique. That, that is unique. unique. Very unique. I love that. Yes. Uh, by the way, I just want to acknowledge Mike, AKA Pope. Pope, you got to check out the uh, rewind um, at the top of the show. You did a great job. Uh, late, but really into this crisis on an infinite earth, Lex versus Alexander Luthor thing. So you got to tell us who's Lex and who's Alexander. <laughs> Because uh, I would think I was more Alexander than Lex, Joe. I don't. I don't know. That cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> All, right, All right, let's third, get into it. Who's next? Third criteria is uh, story. Oh, yeah. Pulling our heartstrings. Pulling our heartstrings. Uh, have the story relate to the book. Again, I don't know. Were you uh, at a funeral and by accident you brought your this amazing, this amazing book by Raza? This cover right here, Green Lantern number six. And you're just weeping over the side of the casket, and you just you're just caught in emotion, and you throw it in there. They close the casket, they bury bury it. Thirty years later, by the way, this book is now worth seventeen thousand dollars, right? And you're like, I should never have left it in the casket, but I just won the lottery. What should I do, Joe? Maybe use your lottery money to go buy. It. Get that book back that you left in the casket <laughs> of your best friend, Chet. That's what would happen right there. So, anyways, those are three criteria. Moving on, uh, 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 Joe, what's your first fresh get of the week? My first fresh get of the week is right here. Uh, this is a pretty cool book. I actually bought a collection this past week that had multiple copies of this book. This is Batman number six hundred nine. Is the first appearance of Tommy Elliot Hush um, from the Hush Run. Jim Lee's foray into Batman. Uh, Jeff Lebb written story and just one of the great modern batman runs but the uh, thing that makes this yeah. book unique is right down there at the bottom that barcode right there on this modern book a book from 2003 um at this point it's estimated that newsstand copies like this one were probably about two percent of the print run i know 1999 is five percent or less so this was 2003, a few years later, probably about 2%. And then by uh, 2010, 2011, when they discontinued newsstands, it was down to less than one, far less than 1% of the run. Yeah, so I, I would I would estimate probably 2%, let's say anywhere from 1% to 5%, though, to be safe. There were not just one, but two copies of this book, both high-grade newsstands, in the collection that I bought and uh, a lot of other newsstand books from the early two thousands. Um, so I'm going to be doing some grading of those. Maybe get some nine eights fingers crossed. That's a, yo, but that could be kind of be unique, right? Because two to 5%. You know. I, listen, I bought this book in 20, 30 collections. First newsstand copies I've ever found. That's incredible. <laughs> and you have wow. two. And I have two. Okay, so here's the deal. Uh, our next uh, our next submission is a first time submitter. Submitter, uh, Kaboom mm -hmm. Comics. But oh, cool. So, so Joe, I'm gonna have you look up Kaboom. It's oh yeah, I'm supposed to do that, right? Right here. But uh, before we let's just buy you some time, Dan. What do you got? I'm gonna throw both of these together. You know, I'm a big. Star I'm out. Fan. I got some bad news, guys. Uh oh. It's my last beer. Oh, okay. Wow. Go ahead, Dan. Jeez, two two deaths in one one evening. Okay, that's great. Um, I, okay, I mean, I, look, I have no problem with Star Wars. I have fun with the Star Wars people because I'm a huge Star Trek guy. Uh, back when I was a kid, there was no such thing as Star Wars. That's how old I am. So I'm going to show both these uh, for, and you'll see why in a second. This is Star Trek number one, and it's the, uh, the the first movie. And why I bring this up is because I had it signed by George Takei. Oh, nice. Wow. And he is he is such a nice man. Let me tell you, what a sweet guy. If you get a chance, which I need to see him again. And the reason why is because I have my other submission here there in the same go. one. This is Star Trek number one. This was gifted me uh, by Nor uh, Nowhere Bound. He just, you know, out of, outright sweet. gave this to very me. Very, sweet. very sweet man. He said, hey, Love you know, I, long story. But that is signed by William Shatner. Wow. And Love he is, story, yeah. he, he's in the 90s. He's in 93, I think he is. 
still yeah. very energetic for his age. We saw him at the San Francisco Fan Expo Con. And before this is being sent to uh, um, EGS, I need to get this signature on there, the George Takei signature for obvious reasons, because he's there for Star Trek One. And so man, that would be while well, they're all still alive. That'd be super, super cool to absolutely, have. Absolutely, man. That that's a great story, by the way. Uh, Joe, would you agree? Yeah, that's that's awesome. Um, fun fun fact: uh, George Takai's uh, nephew uh, did surgery on my hand. I have a metal plate in my hand, and George. Oh, no Takai's kidding! No man. kidding! Yeah, well, maybe get it signed for Dan. Uh, Dan, can you bring up the first book, please? That I can. Was George Perez cover. Is that correct? That is a George Perez cover. Thank you. I I, I failed to mention that. Beautiful man. That cover is nice. outstanding. I love that. Uh, well done, Dan De La Torre. We love you uh, and your uh, submissions and stuff like that. I'm getting a little. I love you too, man. While you, while you've had a couple in you, just saying. <laughs> uh, okay, Kaboom Comics, Joseph. Whoa. <laughs> Yeah, Kaboom Comics. Put it up on the screen. We got a nice Daredevil from the Silver Age here. My pick of the week uh, got this yesterday at a flea market in Tijuana. Wasn't expecting to find anything, but found this beauty. Daredevil number 37, Doctor Doom and Daredevil cover. That's a great cover. I already own number 38. By the way, that is a two-part storyline, and it's another Doom cover on issue 38. Uh, so this makes my week finding this book. Uh, it's so cool story with dr doom uh switch bodies with daredevil but later switch back on issue 38 thanks for the follows like shares don't forget to follow and subscribe to our youtube channel we will be giving away a wolverine 88 9.6 deluxe edition Woo! follow kaboom comics guys if you haven't done so yet um and when we do our first cgc unboxing video please join and support us thanks everyone so kaboom comics there you go there you give go. them a follow, follow and uh, check out the youtube first as well submission. that's great by the way, uh, Dan, I forgot to mention this. Did did you know that um, Gene Roddenberry is like the watered down version of George Lucas? I'm not certain how to respond to that. Yeah. What? Okay. But we have Mon Comics what? coming up. I, I, I see. I see a rumble happening very soon between Star Wars people, and Star Trek people. Trust me. I know leave people. Leave us in the comments I know what people. you think. Gene Roddenberry versus George Lucas. Give it to us. Uh, don't start. Don't start. Joseph. Joseph, yes. we got Mon Comics coming up. My man. Uh, this is a lot we're bringing to the plate here for you. You have a lot of responsibility. I All right, Mon Comics, I'm good. Okay, here we go. Yo, by the way, another first submission by Mon Comics. I love this submission, Joe. Me too. I love it. Uh, Joseph. Put it up on the screen. There we go. My first submission for Comic Book Canon Fresh from the Comic Shop is a book that always seems to find me. I went to a small, and I mean very small, comic card and collectible show this past weekend. Only two of the eight vendors had comics. Wow, eight vendors. That is small. And only two of them had comics. Wow. Uh, and they only had two short boxes each. But in one of them, I did find this beauty for only $25. Damn. It's probably mid-grade, but presents beautifully and made the small drive and hunt totally fun and worth it. Man-Thing Volume 1, Issue 1, First Man-Thing Solo Series, uh, cover by Frank Brunner, written by Steve Gerber, pencils by Val Merrick, inks by Sal Trapini, second appearance of Howard the Duck. This issue will be going to a very special friend of the channel since I have my forever copy already. Please go follow Comic Book Canon as well as 360 Comics for some fantastic weekly content and shenanigans and participate in the fresh from the comic shop because it's fun. Damn straight. Thank you, Mon Comics. That's a Woo. great that is a great verse submission. That's like up there with what uh Raising Elm does, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Uh Probably. Joseph, we have Nukes Comics next, but I'd like to see your next fresh friend. Uh sure. Yeah. Um, so my next fresh get of the week. Uh, some of you saw that I posted. Earlier this week, I bought a bulk collection. Essentially, this person, uh, this collector, had already sold off all the big keys. They had a, a buyer go through and fill a box of the biggest and best keys in their collection. And they they had already they sold everything off that, that was like that. Now, the person who bought stuff, they didn't buy everything. They left behind a lot of 10, 15, 20 even some books more expensive than that. And they missed a couple, of course. That's always going to happen. You know, if you're going through pretty quickly, 
you're going to miss some stuff. Uh, I posted earlier this week, I found an NYX3 in there. Awesome. When you're buying bulk and you think that, you know, you get most of the big stuff's out and you find an NYX3, that's awesome. I also found this. This is probably the second best book after the NYX3. Oh, there you go. <laughs> this Damn. is a good book. This is DC Comics Presents 26. First appearance of the new Teen Titans, including first appearance of Cyborg, Raven, and Starfire. Uh, it's a pretty decent looking copy. Probably in the fine to lower, very fine range. I got to look it over. Maybe I can get it a little bit nicer. Maybe a, a solid, very fine with a press and a clean. Um, but great book. Major DC key. I wish this book had a better cover. I always said that if this is a preview, by the way, there's a preview of the Teen Titans. If if they had never done this preview and if Teen Titans won with that beautiful Perez cover was their true first appearance, that book would be worth so much more money than it is. That book, eh, you can get it mid-grade for like 40 bucks or so. This one is the, the the book to go after, though, and it doesn't even have a good Teen Titans cover. Joe, so. you're right. That cover is bad, but it's a great, great yeah. book. Uh, it's not a bad cover. It's just not – has nothing to do with the Teen Titans because no, it's, it's yeah. Superman uh, Green Lantern. Book. No, absolutely. By the way – Okay. You, you need to uh, save this question for next weekend because this is a great question. So – I actually have a lot to say about this. So we I, don't have I, time for that. Like we can't. I, I know. I know. I, I'll just give you. A, I'll give you a preview. That's a really good question. I think yeah. I'm sure Dan yeah. would have some uh, input on that as well. A few. You a I'd have a few. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I got you, Joe. I got Nukes Comics up right here. Yep. Uh, Let me look at this. I love this cover, by the way. Um, Frost from the comic shop, Amazing Spider-Man, four thirty-five. Peter Parker suffering from an identity crisis. In order to avoid arrest for crime he did not commit, Peter dons various costumes. However, will Dusk or Ricochet be a help or hindrance for our favorite neighborhood wall crawler? This book is part of the multi-titled Identity Crisis story arc and is written by DeFalco and penciled by Bennett. I picked this up from DBS, who says run fills can't be fun filled. I love that expression. Uh, like Joe says always, you know, low grade is better than no grade. Um, but this is a great cover. By the way, I love how uh, Nukes takes these kind of like uh, depth of field shots here where the background falls out of focus. Uh, really well done, Nukes. So solid, solid addition. Uh, Mr. De La Torre, what you got? I got this from our good friend Chris from Journos not that long ago. And I didn't have one. He gave a huge deal on it because it's a nice, it's really pretty, but it's a mid-grade. And it's Spider-Man 2099. Yeah. So very, very cool. Thank you again, uh, uh, Chris. Hope you're doing well. I haven't talked to him in a while. I need to reach out to him, see what he's doing. Again, I, I'm a big fan of, hey, it doesn't have to be a 9.8. It doesn't have to be anything else. As long as it presents well, you can read it and you can enjoy it. And it's in your collection. Well yeah. done. Great book. That's a, good, that's a good book to pick up there, Dan. Uh, next up, we do have, just give me a heads up, Mark Lenniker. And what we say about Mark Lenniker here, everybody, Yo, this is driving me crazy. This is driving me crazy. It keeps. Anyway, it's not my fault. I got it up on my phone already. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Mark Lenniker, what do we got? Pop it up. By the let's way, go. again, I just want to say, always a unique book. Absolutely, yeah. A lot, a lot of golden age. A lot of lesser known stuff. So here's a good one. Uh, Mark said, "They say comic collecting can be addictive. So here's crack comics." Number 46 from Quality, Quality Comics 1947, featuring Captain Triumph and his team of adventurers on a four leaf clover for St. Patrick's Day. Not only is Mark keeping this thing unique and schooling us on the history of comics, but is also keeping it topical and festive with the holiday. That is true. Very well done. Uh, the only person who is keeping it more topical and on holiday point is Mr. Dan De La Torre. Uh, okay, uh, next up, I'm going to get this one here, everybody. Um, uh, yeah, here we go. Sorry, everybody. Uh, anyways, t tell us a story, jo uh, Joe. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder where you are. You're definitely a lead singer. Well done. <laughs> Josh's comics, yo. 
I don't. I just say it every week. Josh has done a great job in stepping up his game in these submissions, yo. Tell me I'm wrong. Yeah, man, this is this is so sweet. Black I mean, look, mask, awesome. Look at the freaking like the smoke coming out. I don't know if that was added or that was in the the background picture. Anyways, uh, here we go. Josh's comments. Batman three eighty six first appearance of Black Mask, a crime boss who wore a mask carved from the casket lid of his deceased father. While the Batman Rogues project is ever growing, this is a must have and welcome addition. We'll definitely need to do an update video on my rogues gallery soon. I dedicate this fresh from the comic shop. To... Yo, I gotta be strong. Hold it together, man. We're counting on you, Jeff. Come on, man. I Hang dedicate in this fresh from the comic shop to Chet. While your body and AI mind may be gone, our memories of you will last forever. I'm not a fan of grape soda, but I will chug and crush a Pepsi Zero in your honor. To the well-organized mind, death is but the next great adventure. Okay, what was the criteria? Pull at our heartstrings? Come on. Come on, he did, Josh. He did a good job. He always does a good job. Especially his in the eulogy. I mean, guys, if you need to, watch the rerun, a uh, rewind, because the uh, Joe's enjoying every moment of this. Because I am just... I am. I really am. You tried your best here, man. <laughs> I'm so glad Dan's here right now, too. Yeah. Uh, moving on, though. Uh, I'm going to, why don't we do this? I'm going to hit up, uh, yeah, this is what's going to happen. We're going to do Comic Toby, unless you have that up, Joe. I already got it. I, Let's do it. Let's I'm do ahead it. of you, man. Let's do it. Transfer All right. Six, I uh, it, right. Hi, guys. It's me, your old pal, Comic Toby. Today, for the program, I present two copies of Transformers number six. I also have a collector's card that comes with your Amazon exclusive Titans class Devastator playset. Enjoy. Devastator. Hmm. I mean, I know, Joe, you are not into Transformers. I know, Dan, I don't think you are either. Probably not. No, no. Uh, but I'm too young. Dan's too handsome. <laughs> hey, just because I showered, okay? So and live long and prosper at all. Of you. Um, yeah, no. Uh, I have not run issue six yet, but five. Devastator, those MFers. I tell you what. Uh, moving on, uh, uh, Joseph, your third fresh get of the week, your final one, right? Sure. Yeah, my last one. So you all saw this book already. This is not a really a fresh from the comic shop. It's fresh back from CGC. Uh, you remember in January I picked up a collection of Claremont X-Men books, and this was oh. this was the big one. This was the mm. uh, the the you know, the book that I was most excited because I felt as though it was an upgrade to my personal collection. It was a nicer copy than the one that I had. And not only that, but I ended up selling the one that was in my personal collection, buying another one that I sent in to get graded with this one. I got, I got two graded and I said, Hey, whichever one comes back the highest grade, that's the one that I'm keeping in the PC because X-Men is something that I collect. Um, I was expecting six five seven zero on the lower grade one and seven zero seven five maybe an eight zero on the higher grade one. Well, big shout out to Bricksco Comics, aka Bond. Paul oh, Bond. Bond, you you tried your best there uh, because he did the cleaning and pressing on this book, and he is a wizard. I'm pretty decent with with like. Copper Age, Bronze Age stuff, stuff that's not too difficult to do. Uh, Paul is so good at, at Golden Age, at square bound books like this. So, again, I thought this was 7 5, uh, 7 0 to 7 5, maybe an 8 0. I was praying for an 8 0. Check this out. Ah, <laughs> well done. Yeah. Nine, well done. Freaking yeah. Two. This is now. The second most expensive comic book that I own. This is like peak after my 9 8 Crow one. This is the peak of my collection. That's outstanding. Uh, and yeah. Then the first appearance of Nightcrawler, my favorite comic two, book character. Uh, two favorite characters of yours, by the way, Crow and Nightcrawler. Yeah. They're, and it makes sense that I would have the most value put into two of my favorite books. So. Absolutely. Uh, that is an outstanding get right there. Another get. An outstanding get and well done. I know 
you know, Dr. Plagueis has his template, but it's always surprising to see what, what he brings. Uh, yep. Is this one right here. Look at that. Look at that. Picked up this awesome Days of Future Past Marvel Legends pack this week. I haven't been this excited for a figure slash figures in a very long time. Not only are the figures incredibly detailed, but it gave me the opportunity to do a layout of one of one of, if not my favorite comics. And frankly, this is probably my personal favorite post of all time. We love this, Dr. Plagueis. We absolutely love this. Obviously, you know, I've mentioned many times how big of a John Byrne fan I am. Uh, I love the, the, you know, the old school, or uh, old man Wolverine from Days of, Days of Future Past. Joseph, Dan, any comments here? Stunning. Uh, be- I mean, the, everything about this particular picture is 100% gorgeous. Yep. Yeah, yep. this is, uh, this is, uh, whenever anyone asks me what my favorite storyline in comic books is, it's Ooh. this one. It's, it's short and sweet, two issues, deals with a lot of cool things you know the, the 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 mutant struggle struggle that encompasses most x-men stories a little bit of time travel introduction of some new characters and uh you know development of older characters and for for all those reasons th- this is it's my quintessential storyline to tell people hey you want to read something take this trade paperback read days of future past part one and two well um, worth it and yeah this is such a cool setup i love it well worth it indeed. Uh, all right. So, Dan, what do you have for your last fresh get of the week? All right. Talking about pulling on the heartstrings. I've been a collector almost 50 years. Don't do it, Dan. Don't do it. Over 30-something years ago, I had this comic that was stolen from me. And mm. I knew who did it, and I couldn't prove it. And back in those days, if I'd called the police and said, hey, you know, this is missing, they would have said, hey, kid, have your mom get you another comic, that kind of thing. Well, that comic uh, today in, in the same condition that it was in probably would have been right. It would have rivaled what you have with your ex, uh, giant size X-Men, Joe. Um, some way, somehow, there's, I found it. I think this is the same one because I recognize one of the markings on it. It's totally been beaten up, but it has been slammed. And what's also special about it is this particular comic, according to Overstreet, there's only 100 known to exist. And it's this one here. All Winners number 19 this is the first appearance of the All Winner Squad. And what this is, is the only Marvel super t- superhero team that Marvel ever produced in the Golden Age. And look at it, the poor thing's been through hell and back, but it still presents very well, even if the rest of it looks pretty good. But it's got some issues, certainly. Um, now, I said it's there's only 100 of these known to exist, or maybe less, or maybe eight or, 80 or so on the CGC census. The same can be said of this particular comic here, All Winner's 21. Now, my suspicion is this, is that they printed these back in the golden age by the hundreds of thousands of them. There were only 100 of each of these. These are the only two appearances of the, of the all Winner squad. It's sort of like having All-Star 3, the first Justice Society. Um, my suspicion would be this, why there were so few. I think what, what it was probably a, a production thing. The biggest problem with uh, golden age uh, uh, publishers was sending these out through the mail. They wanted to get the cheapest rate possible. So there's a lot of legal things. They're not very interesting. But I don't think it's an accident that both issues 19 and 21, there is no issue 20, by the way, that they're only 100 for for that reason. There was some goofy thing, and there's no history because there was no records back in those days. But to have, I, I can, by landing this and finding this comic again, I can say uh, genuinely that I am only one of 100 people in the entire world that can say that I have both of them. Yeah, yeah, and, and if there's only a hundred of them, there's probably only a, a handful of people, if any other than you, that have both of them. Yeah, yeah, for real. Well done, Dan. That is, I would say that's unique. That's uh, <laughs> that's got a great story too, right? Because you think that's the book that I think so. I can't prove it, but it was a long time ago. Anyways, uh, and we don't have, you know, we can't do the presentation. Anyways. Uh, that's well done. Very well done. All right. Our final submission of the week is Raising Elm. Look at that. I love it. Raising Elm. Howdy, comic fam. One of these days, I'm, I I hope to own a sharp-looking copy of Strange Tales, issue 110 in my PC. About eight years ago, my eyes of Agamotto were opened up to the wonderful world of magic and mysticism when Benedict brought the character of Doctor Strange to life on the big screen. I wish I, wish I had known 
prior to 2016, how important that particular issue would become. Until I found my, way, my own copy, uh, this minty copy of Marvel's Collector's Item at Classics Issue 3 will have to suffice as a placeholder. Why, you may ask? Because it's the first U.S. reprint of the first appearance of Doctor Strange from Tale, Strange Tales number uh, 110. Funny thing is, over the last few years, I've spent through, um, enough on other books that I could have owned three or four copies of Strange Tales 110 by now. Anyways, much love, comic fam. This is this is really cool because I love. Can you put that back up on the screen? Um, the 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 thing I love about these old Marvel classic collectors and Marvel tales these these reprint books, um, I absolutely love that they actually show the covers of the books so you kind of know, and it just shows you how important like the golden age stuff was. I uh, sorry, the silver the early silver age stuff was for Marvel. The books that are reprinted. There's actually not even the Doctor Strange first appearance on the cover. Uh, there's that little blurb at the bottom yeah. about it, but that book is not on the on the cover here. There's Fantastic Four number uh, four, which is the first Silver Age appearance of Namor. There is Tales of Suspense. I believe that's 40, which is the second Iron Man. And there's Incredible Hulk. I believe that's issue three, which is one of the original six books. So that's... It's so cool that there's so much history that almost every book was a major key from the early 60s. But I love the history he surrounds it with in the picture itself. So, yeah, Racing sure. Out Man raises the bar all the time. Uh, so, Joseph, we have a lot of great submissions this week. We do. And we this do. is going to be hard to do. Luckily, we have a judge here on retainer. We do. Very expensive. Um, I have a few here. I don't know how many I have, but uh, Joe, what? Uh, shit, I have. There's there's a lot of good ones. There really are, man. I have. Okay, I have one. I have two. I have three. I have four. Four that stick out for me. What do you have, Joe? I think I probably have four too. So let's let's go back and forth. These are going to overlap, so maybe the judge only needs to stamp the paperwork and gavel. We'll uh, see. We'll see. All right. Uh, so uh, you want me to go first? I'll go first. I'll go first. Uh, Doctor Plagueis. Mm -hmm. That's one of my four. He's he's not only one thing that I'm actually just noticing now that I didn't notice before, and because it's it's subtle. There's a spotlight. It's so cool. I'm I didn't notice it. that. Th yeah, th that is, this is, it's just so well put together and such an iconic book. And, and Dr. Plagueis, he's, he's got this, he's got this little niche here where he uses figures and, and pops and stuff. And I love that he does that. And I love that he makes it his own kind of thing. So yeah, that, that one, that one was up there with me. What's, what's your, uh, what's okay, one of so yours? that overlaps right there. Uh, okay. I did like Nori Jordan, what he brought to the table here. Oh, yeah. That's a good one right there. Definitely definitely a more unique book. This isn't a major key. This isn't, you know, an ASM book from the 80s that we all know. This is a Punisher Max book, uh, a really great run that is totally underrated and a phenomenal cover and a nicely presented post as well. Yes, absolutely. Well done, Nori. Jordan Joseph, you're, uh, d does that overlap? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Josh, that overlaps with me too. It, it overlaps with me too. It okay, looks awesome. It's a great book. I wouldn't consider this one a unique book by any means, but at the same time, the presentation is really good, and it I'm definitely pulled out our heartstrings, dedicating it to the late great Chet. Um, obviously, that's going to pull on our heartstrings here. So that that one, that one does check firmly checks two of the boxes there. Tell you what, um, though, the judge has no heartstrings, so it's right. Not that's true. All right, so my turn, I guess, uh, would be first mission, <laughs> outstanding Mon Comics. Yep, come on, come on. Yeah, th this one really stood out to me too. It it's you know you, you gotta love just the scenery. You know, it it, it takes effort. You know, this isn't a situation where you took some things at home and you made a little setup, and you know, that's all well and good. Don't don't get me wrong. You know, keep doing that. That's it's awesome. But this is, hey, I took this book out. I went out in the woods. I found a cool spot. I set it up. I made sure the lighting was good. It's you know, so natural well lit. lighting. The surroundings yeah. are excellent. You got the moss right there, like Joe. It's outstanding. 
And realistically, like if you squint a little bit, you almost can't. Other than the fact that you can see the board, uh, the board, like the border yeah. of the board where the white is, you, you wouldn't be able to tell the comic was there. You just it just yeah. kind of camouflage camouflages in. So, uh, yeah, sure. man, those are those are four tough ones. Do you it have really do you have like one or two that sticks out out of those? I've- I'm going to I'm going to go with one that I really lean towards. Uh, All right, which one do you really lean? There's so many subtleties in there. By the I'll way, be honest, I have a I have two that I lean towards. So if you have one that you lean towards and they overlap, then it's that that's the that's, winner. Uh, yeah, then the judge needs to just do the paperwork. Um by the way, like, subscribe, share with your friends if you enjoy this show cuz we enjoy hanging out with y'all on a Sunday night. Uh so you want me to say mine first, right? Tell me tell me what yours is. It's Dr. Plagueis, man. Okay, so I had two that I leaned towards, and they were the, the, the two out of that I wanted to go with were Mon Comics and Dr. Plagueis. So we have a winner here. We do. We have a, a consensus that Dr. Plagueis Dr. Plagueis is moving on a bowl out of the park here. To the semifinals, the second semifinals of March. We have to do the first first we have to do the first semifinals first before the second, obviously, but we need to get to the 2023 tournament, which we'll get to. Judge, uh, can you please sign off on the paperwork and give us a gavel? Hear ye, hear ye. Court is now in session. The Honorable Dan Delatore presiding. Before we uh, I issue my ruling, a legal question that I need to ask both you gentlemen about. With I uh, agreed, we have gorgeous, gorgeous submissions here. And there was one that I was going to pick because of the effort and the gorgeous approach and everything. But I'm in consensus with you. Dr. Plagueis' book will be the winner of this particular week. But the um, the first submission by Mons Comics, The Man Thing, was so gorgeous. It really was. Should we consider, for future reference, because, again, look how gorgeous that is. That, w- that was going to be the winner until Dr. Plagueis showed up with his submission here. Should we consider, maybe we talk backstage about this or in my chambers probably better idea yeah, yeah, to, better. to be able to have a, a submission uh, brought out for the following week because why waste such a gorgeous effort like that you know so again that's something we might want to mm. hash out backstage judge respectfully judge respectfully this is the way the dominoes fell or the chips fell or the dominoes the dominoes and the chips yeah they were double dipping joe please uh no, we about judge, respectfully, respectfully judge getting hungry Respectfully, uh, Judge Joe, can I please have your comments on on your thoughts about moving into the next week? Yeah, I, th- I think one of the really cool things about Fresh from the Comic Shop is that we have the same, uh, sorry, different books every single week. I think it would get a, we'd get a little bit convoluted and, and showing really things again. Now, listen, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give Mon Comics all the props in the world. And the fact that he's already got someone lined up for that, giving it, you know sending that away to someone else in the community. Awesome stuff. Uh, it's a great submission, but you can't, you know, just because it's a great submission doesn't mean it's going to win. So Then I will not overrule this. All right, All right. So for this week's submission, Dr. Plagueis wins. Case dismissed. Dr. Plagueis, you are moving on to the second semifinals of March. You'll be going up against next week, uh, next week's semifinalists. Uh, so yeah, Judge, thank you for joining us as usual. Granted, you get paid a lot of money to do so. Uh, please like, subscribe. Uh, I'm a little bit uh, tipsy. I need to numb the pain. But b- before we go, I just need to just t- talk about something, a text message that I got from Mr. Bronzeville Comics. Jim. He said, I just noticed something. Rogue in her original form, didn't have that long hair, looked a little bit older, yada, yada. He said, Rogue looked exactly like my 11th grade social studies teacher and then sends me <laughs> sends me this picture. Whoa! <laughs> Come on! Wow! Oh, that's awful. Yeah. Hey, we could get sued by that, by the way. Yeah. You need to consult my brother who's a lawyer. We are never going to... Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. Wow. Uh, we need to move on. We Jim, might want to edit that, that later. That's... Jim, that's great content. Great content. You great need content. to put that on your channel, actually. Yeah. Uh, I had something to say. Just can't remember. Oh, it. oh, hold up. Dr. Plagueis, Plagueis won February. He's not eligible. Thank you for being honest, Dr. Plagueis. Judge. 
Oh, well, that makes things much easier. And, you know, I was going to say that, and I should, probably shouldn't have, uh, should have uh, made mention uh, who is eligible and who isn't. So it looks like Mons Comics wins with a gorgeous, gorgeous submission. So I hold on, I have to write this down legally. Okay. Mons Comics is the winner. Case dismissed. Dr. Plagueis, thank you very much for that. Uh, uh, Joe, Judge, I uh, love doing the show each and every week. Like, honestly, I have a... Uh, yeah, I love it. <laughs> and we're all with heavy hearts this week. We we just are. Yeah. yeah, I'm numbing the pain, people. I am numbing the pain. Yeah, don't forget to stick around because we are going to be... Uh... Right, there's some updates here. Uh, okay. You may want to stick around. We always have a stinger at the end, the end credit scene. Uh, I don't know. Dan, or Judge, do you have any uh, closing comments? No, uh, Chet, rest in peace. Thank you for all you did for myself and the canon and my two good friends here. And we will see you next week. Thank you, Judge. Joseph. Uh, yeah. R.I.P. to Chet. Shout out to our savior. Uh, he defeated Johnny Galactico, got us all out of the Matrix, <laughs> all that stuff. Uh, he will be missed. Um, if you're not too sad about Chet, next Saturday, Cherry Hill, New Jersey, one day comic show. Come hang oh, out. I'll have a table set up there. We should have had like um, uh, an image for that, dummy. We um, should have. We could have. We didn't. That's okay. I got a lot of shows coming up. We'll do it for the next one. And just a reminder, too, we have a great guest next week. Uh, Mickey, yes. a.k.a. Swaggle House Comics, uh, will be here next week. So, uh, everybody, until next week, be good to yourself. Be good to others. Um, stick around for a hot second, please. Judge, thank you. This is Tiffany Thiessen G-Pot, Chet's wife. And let me tell you, I am beyond livid. What kind of Mickey Mouse operation are you running over there at Comic Book Cannon? News travels fast, even to California. And let me assure you, I did not hear about my husband's heroic sacrifice from you too. Chet would not have thrown himself into some digital gladiatorial arena to save your precious show without telling me. He may have been a passionate goofball, but he wasn't suicidal. The least you could have done was notify his next of kin. Instead, I find out through his fan club that my husband is gone. Unacceptable. Let me be perfectly clear. I will not stand for this. You will be hearing from my lawyers. Consider this a formal notice of intent to sue. You took my husband from me, and now you're going to pay. <laughs>